Hey, I have not posted in a while. Um, a lot of you guys have been asking for SVG design advice, so I figured I would start off with a quick tutorial on just how SVGs work in general. I feel that if more people understood the foundation of SVGs, uh, the rest would be a lot easier. So um, I hope you enjoy. As I mentioned, this is just going to be a brief overview on SVG basics. And this is, SVGs can be used for many uses, not just Cricut or for crafting. Um, I feel like there is a misconception that SVG files are specifically for crafting and that's absolutely not true. They're actually used a lot in web design. They're used a lot in print. Um, because one of the great things about SVG files is that they're actually made up of an XML script. And most of us, if we haven't worked with Invector software, we might not realize that SVGs are just a bunch of data. It's an algorithm. So let me show you an example. So here's a file that is actually in my uh, free SVG library. If you're interested, I'll put a link in the description. You can check that out. Um, and if you were to upload this into Cricut, it would upload into all the separate layers and you would see it pretty much how it appears on the screen right now. But if you were to open it within a vector software like Inkscape or Illustrator, Corel, you would be able to actually see all those data points. It really helps you understand how SVG files work with your Cricut machine. Is that this blue line that's outlining um, all the different parts of the design is the path that your blade is going to cut. So your blade is going to cut along this path, right? Pretty simple. But what's really neat is that all these data points are going to tell your Cricut blade to turn. And these handles are what control how much it turns by. So it's your blade would follow the path. Oh, here's a data point. I need to turn. How much do I turn by? And it reads the data that is um, controlled by your handles. And then it follows a little longer. Oh, another data point. I need to turn. How much do I turn by? Again, your handles are what control that data in the um, XML file. And then it continues. So that's really neat. Um, where problems can arise is when you trace a file with an auto converter. So maybe it's a file that you found online. Um, you It is in PNG or JPEG form and you wanna turn it into an SVG. What can happen is something like this. You ever find a beautiful image, but unfortunately it is low resolution. That can happen a lot with Facebook groups because Facebook automatically lowers image resolution because they want fast upload speeds. They want Facebook, the app, or the or if you're in the browser for it to be quick. So that's not great for images. Um, so you find a beautiful image and you go to put it into design space or maybe a website for SVG conversion and it comes out a little rough, right? Now there are ways, um, Cricut on the Cricut design space has an, the app version, which allows you to smooth edges. So as you can see, this would have a ton of points where the blade would be moving. Your blade would be moving and turning a lot. One, it's going to cause your cuts to take much longer. So when you're tracing files and they're not um, very clean files, your cuts are going to take longer and you're also going to have more of a chance of the vinyl lifting up, especially when you cut at smaller sizes. Imagine you're cutting a file, ooh, <laughs> imagine you're cutting a file at a really small size and your blade is constantly turning while it's following the path. That is going to cause lifting. That is the number one cause of vinyl lifting on intricate cuts. That or, um, having the corners be, um, not be in a smooth transition. So when you're cutting very small, that's also something you want to think of. But primarily, less anchor points, the better. So let's say you trace this and you do have the ability to smooth it out, right? You might be thinking, well, then it, it'll all be okay, right? There'll be less anchor points. Not necessarily. So sometimes, even when it looks like a nice smooth edge, there may still be a ton of anchor points and I've seen this a lot with auto traced images. So I'm going to use what would be the like smooth tool in Illustrator to auto smooth this. And I'm just gonna smooth this out. And this is decreasing the anchor points. So it's not perfect, but it's definitely smoothed out a lot. Not too bad, but as you can see, 
less anchor points, but still way more than is needed, right? Um, like right here. So if you've ever auto converted an image and there's a lot of like little tiny flaws like this, like right here, right here, I see that a lot in Cricut groups where people post images and they're like, why does my file look like this? If you um, were able to open the file in vector software, you could do something as simple as this. Just grab that handle, turn it. I'm going to actually move it from this end and it would be very easy. Sometimes you can even just delete an anchor point and then go in, oops, and edit one that's already there. And it really helps. Um, lessen the amount of anchor points you have going on. So as you can see, if you say you're not ready to design a file from scratch, but you just want to be able to edit the converted files you already have, it is a great resource to be able to work with in vector software. I wanted to cover the difference between a raster file, which would be your JPEGs, your PNGs, all of those, and a vector file, which SVGs are vectors. Um, SVG stands for Scalable Vector Graphic. And there are other formats of SVG, but that's just the one we primarily will see in crafting. So a raster file um, is made up of pixels. So if you've ever um, zoomed in or enlarged a JPEG or PNG file, you may have noticed that as you start to zoom in, it gets pixelated. And that can happen a lot when you find an image you like and then you go to enlarge it for your project and it starts to get really blurry. Well, the really great thing about vector files is that no matter how much you enlarge them, they will never get blurry. Whereas with a raster file, as you start to zoom in, it will become blurry. So when you're using auto converters, what they're doing essentially is tracing the edge of an image. So if you are using a low resolution low resolution image that you got on Google, you go to enlarge them, they look extremely low quality. But the bigger issue is if you're trying to convert them to SVG, when the software goes to trace around the edges, it's very hard to get a nice clean line, which is why we end up with this, right? Even once I use like the smooth tool on it, it's still, there's lots of tiny flaws, right? This is not a nice clean file. Um, and again, a lot of this could be easily fixed. Um, and SVG editing doesn't have to be difficult. Here's a really great tool. I used to use it a lot when I was new and I was all really confused by nodes and handles and how it all worked. This is the pencil tool. All you do is draw over a line that exists and it redraws it. And you can even up the smoothing on it. So you can have it accurate to smooth. I always would up the smooth. And then say I have something really tricky. I'll use this as an example. I want to like cut this in and make it more, um, what's the word? Just not look so flawed. It looks a little wonky, right? Like we know usually it would look like this side, this side looks so just a little off, but I'm not really, let's say I'm new and I don't know how to really manipulate the nodes and anchor points. You could just use the pencil tool and draw in. And the great thing is, is you can go over this as many times as you need to. And I would I'm just doing this really fast. Work with it till I got somewhere I liked. Then I could go in, I could grab my smooth tool, and guess what? I can smooth all this out until I finally have a result that I like. I mean, again, this isn't the best way to get, this isn't <laughs> the best method if your, your goal is to have as clean of a file as possible. But when you're new and you are just, um, you know, you just wanna be edit, able to edit files, it's a great option. Just draw and it edits your edges for you. So you can see why when I say anybody can learn to edit their SVG files, I truly mean anybody can learn to edit their SVG files. I hope you found the video helpful and were able to learn something new about SVGs today. Uh, I will be doing a free mini course that will really expand on what SVGs are and different softwares you can use, different methods to create SVGs. Um, I will post a link in the description below if you would like to sign up.
I will also post a link to my free SVG library in my Facebook group. If you have any questions about SVG design, please comment them below. And if you found this helpful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and I hope you have a great day. Thanks for watching.